Well, welcome to today's lecture. We have just started to discuss the topics on mineral exploration. We uh, just uh, just before we uh, get into the proper mineral exploration topics, we just had a brief uh, overview of the of classification of mineral resources uh, based on their economic criteria and uh, geological uh, certainty, the occurrence of these resources and uh, the idea behind looking at our idea behind uh, having this kind of classification at the back of our mind is that this uh, when we classify the mineral resources into broadly into the identified and the undiscovered resources. So, it is essentially the undi un, uh, undiscovered or the probability range the hypothetical or the speculative part of the mineral resources is the one that we would like to convert it into identified through a through the process of mineral exploration, which is a very very elaborate uh, exercise involving lots of scientific techniques with lots of evolving ideas with uh, the development of technology and uh, with evolving ideas with better and better knowledge on the genesis of different types of mineral deposits that have come to our knowledge come to the they have been constantly adding to the knowledge base on the wide spectrum of mineral resources mineral deposits that uh, occur in the earth's crust sometimes there are some new discoveries new types of deposits which uh, give us many new insights into the ore forming processes and uh, in the long run they add to the knowledge base on which we can plan our exploration efforts, we can design our exploration programs and use of uh, different technology for the exploration as will be as we have uh, already stated that it will be the mineral exploration uh, as a full range of the activities exercise the methodologies technologies that is evolved evol in that is uh, involved in this would be difficult to cover them up. Uh, all in this uh, short lecture series. Uh, and in this when our basic objective is to get a get an overview of the elementary knowledge about these topics. So, we will just try to do that. And uh, we saw the McElvis box where it is where the reserve where the mineral deposits or the mineral resources are classified. So, measured is the one on which we have the least uncertainty in the in the calculated amount that is present in terms of millions or billions of tons or millions of ounces as we saw in our early discussion. The part that is covered under indicated will basically involve a little bit more of uncertainty and the inferred is also accordingly uh, involve greater uncertainty in their quantity that is available. Sometimes even we come and propose uh, we can we even use words such as uh, developed uh, developed part of the uh, reserve that that part of the ore body which is uh, developed in the sense that which is ready to be put into production and in mine uh, by uh, defining certain parameters such as the ratio of the quantity of the overburden that is to be removed to get the ore to produce the ore. Uh, uh, sometimes the ratio sometimes would be 4 is to 1 or even uh, more and the higher is the uh, this ratio which is called as the strip ratio uh, 
uh, higher is the strip ratio, higher is the cost of mining. These are the aspects that we will be discussing a little bit more details in our later section of the lecture series when we will be discussing about the mineral resource appraisal and uh, uh, the estimation. Okay. We were we also uh, started the discussion that reporting in the form of this reserve as measured, indicated, inferred uh, or possible or uh, um, um, proved possible uh, proved probable and possible. This kind of reserve reporting is not very consistent. There are chaos in terms of the terminology that is used in proved mineral resources and there is a bit of a conflict in reporting of the uh, mineral and the fuel resources. So, the United Nations framework that was proposed was a kind of a consistent and a uniform code of reporting the mineral resources uh, and which has certain advantages and as we saw them before in, in the previous classification scheme when all, only the two parameters one is the geological certainty and the other the economic viability and feasibility were combined together and the mineral resources were classified as we saw in the McAlvey's box. So, this is basically the CRIR SCO committee that is for committee for mineral resources reserves international reporting standards which was the old one that was followed and uh, this was the application was in mining processing metallurgical economic marketing legal environments infrastructure and social and governmental factors all uh, factors taken together. And we discussed about the classification scheme that was pro that was adopted for the United Nations framework classification, where the three the uh, the socio the socioeconomic viability and the feasibility are now being plot on two different axes, and the geological knowledge. And uh, as we know that the geological knowledge uh, G4 to G1, it's in the increasing order. G1 represents the one about which uh, the geological certainty is the most and it's kind of uh, the existence of the in the form of an ore body of the required dimension is proved to be existing by using various direct and indirect methods and uh, the project feasibility is essentially in terms of the economic feasibility of uh, developing that mine and going on with the mining operations where the uh, it could be done on a sustainable, sustainably profitable manner and uh, the socio-economic viability that means meeting all other uh, socio-economic parameters and that this is, this is the way the uh, mineral resources are classified and this uh, numbering system means 1, 1, 1 is actually the ones which are the commercially producing uh, mines, the ore bodies in different as we have seen as we see them today. And uh, the ones which uh, as, as we have seen before here also in from F 1 to F 4 it is in the uh, F 4 to F 1 in an increasing order of project feasibility and E 3 to E 1 increasing order of uh, socioeconomic viability. So, the ones which are in brown here are potentially commercial projects in the sense that the geological certainty has been proved and the project feasibility is also quite high and the economic viability is also somewhere intermediate and they represent the uh, potential uh, projects which could be converted into commercial projects uh, as and when these any of these criteria are fulfilled. Uh, this would be uh, a thing which generally we uh, require to know that how this uh, UNFC classification and the old classification scheme they map to each other. As you can see it very clearly what we uh, label as probable or the proved uh, proved one which is the least certainty in their estimation in terms of the quantity that is present and the probable and they would 
actually map onto this 1 1 1 or uh, uh, 1 1 it will be it will be also be 1 1 2 1 sorry 1 1 2 this will be 1 1 3. So, a 1 1 2 can always be also be uh, say here the quantity is estimated although with a little greater uncertainty and the ones which are the inferred or the indicated will be the non commercial one where the geological knowledge are say this is for example, this 2 to 3 or 2 to 2 where the geological certainties are uh, still very less, but they could be potentially uh, commercial they could become potential producing ore bodies in any uh, time in the future after the parameters are satisfied. And the uh, situation like a 334 is where only the exploration results have been obtained and uh, they still to be the geological certainty is still to be proved and although it could possibly be a little bit feasible in terms of the project feasibility and whose economic viability is not yet worked out. So, this is with this much at the back of our mind that the resources uh, our basic idea is to convert all those which are unidentified or speculative or uh, kind of uh, the resources which constitute the resource base together along with the identified. So, our objective is to augment the mineral resources, increase the quantity of the any of the metal or the materials that is available to us converting G 4 to G 1. Although the feasibility part feasibility and the economic viability are dictated by lot many other factors non scientific factors. Converting a particular uh, mineral uh, resource from G 4 to G 1 is essentially what we uh, aim at and go through the process of uh, this exercise which is mineral exploration. So, uh, when it in the in the context of mineral exploration these are the basic questions that come to our mind that what to explore. To answer to that question is what to explore it is basically uh, these are the factors the macroeconomic factors the demand supply and the international price that is going to be one of the key factors if particular any particular metal there is a demand for it and the supply is short and the international price are such that uh, importing of that particular metal or the material would be economically strenuous. So, that becomes an obvious choice that particular metal to be an exploration program for that particular metal has to be designed. There are certain situations as joint supply and joint demand this uh, comes out uh, of the situation that suppose that we have discovered a, a deposit of iron and then we need to establish a steel plant to extract the iron, but then it also needs some other resources like coal or limestone and other resources to actually setting up of a plant for extraction of that metal. So, that makes it essential to go for exploration of the other materials which are which are essential for that particular industry or particular metal extraction plant to be set up. Technological breakthrough there, there could be sometimes there are certain technological breakthrough which makes a particular metal which was otherwise not known to be that very useful in the industrial uh, uh, in the industry. So, that particular metal uh, could become very important and then there could be exploration program for that particular metal. Substitute means uh, again because of this also a result of technological breakthrough there could be some strategic factor for example, uh, uh, energy resource mineral like say for example, uranium it, uh, it definitely is on the list priority list of augmentation of the mineral resources and uh, it would always be better if we could discover large deposits of such kind of metals and because they have got strategic importance in terms of gen generation of energy and many other aggressive uh, political factors. Uh, so, these are some of the uh, things that come to our mind when we try to answer that what to explore. 
and then the next question comes to our mind in regarding mineral exploration is where to explore. Uh, means which area to choose for for conducting an exploration program. So, number one is ancient workings. Ancient workings are things which are the vestiges or the remnants of mining activities which were carried out by our ancestors in the in the in the prehistoric times when uh, we, we all know about the history of use of metals like the copper is bronze is uh, iron age and so on where the uh, our the uh, in the ancient time the not not much of technology of mining was available and only the um, only the minerals uh, the mineral bodies which are only exposed to the surface most of the time they are oxidized so, those were the ones which were worked by the uh, prehistoric man for extraction of uh, different types of metals by very, uh, very crude rudimentary uh, technologies like a, like a village blacksmith shop where metals uh, metal oxides could be uh, melted, melted and could be extracted and such kind of old workings are left in many different parts in remote places which give us indications that there are possibilities of existence of such type of ore bodies. So, they become they could become the areas where you could uh, uh, could intensify our exploration efforts. Favorable geology uh, it, it is basically based on the whatever geological knowledge that we have acquired through study of this whole spectrum of mineral deposits that we have discussed so far. So, if the geology seems to be favorable for occurrence of any particular type of deposit that also becomes a area of choice. Uh, as we have said that uh, many of the situ many of the many times we extrapolate situations what our previous experience of uh, discovery of deposits in different other parts of the world. Although we keep it keep a very important thing in mind that no two deposits will be same in all their characteristics. And each deposits discovery history is also unique as we will be seeing uh, some of them. Political factor could also motivate choice of certain areas and joint demand which uh, exactly we, I just uh, discussed about joint supply and joint demand. And then the question comes as to how to explore and that is the thing on which we will be mostly be discussing. So, how to explore is the You, we can always think mineral exploration uh, as having these three possible components that can come to one's mind when it comes to how to explore. The science of mineral exploration means the all the principles of mineral the scientific principles or this uh, the uh, understanding that we have developed in the formation of the mineral deposits that they could be effectively utilized in uh, mineral exploration and uh, in addition to that the differences or the, the characteristics of this kind of uh, ore bodies when they occur in the earth's crust the distinctiveness is also something that can be taken into account and can be a part of the science of mineral exploration. Sometimes we feel that mineral exploration this whole exercise is uh, as, as since no two deposits will be alike in all respect and no two deposit will have the same or identical exploration history uh, discovery history. Sometimes it becomes more of an art or practice or people who have been practicing mineral exploration for most part of their lives they become kind of experts whose opinion sometimes matter or sometimes are taken into serious account while carrying out mineral exploration in any, any unknown area. And the methodology is the one also, also which have been continuously evolving many sophisticated uh, methods for exploration of these mineral deposits have come up. So, these are the things will be the science part of it is the one which will be will be mostly focusing and the methodology part uh, it uh, 
we will have some limitations for this particular uh, lecture series, but we will discuss as many as would be appropriate. Uh, in mineral exploration, we uh, we actually get to hear these two terms that brown field or green field. A green field essentially is the areas in which the existence of any ore deposit is not known or these areas that can be called as virgin areas which have never been subjected to any uh, exploration activity before which of course, at the present time will be very very little and the exploration would be the process would be basically be starting from scratches and that will be called as a green field exploration. The brown field exploration is any particular geological terrain where mineral deposits are known to be existing of any particular metal or many different that where the examples that we have seen of metallogenic provinces or the ore districts or mineral belts where there could be occurrence of one or more than one type of deposits for example, the Dharwar Kraton uh, where we see that it uh, houses deposits from a wide spectrum of metals like chromium, manganese, gold, iron and so on. So, in such kind of areas where we already have been uh, producing minerals from different localities mineral deposits, we would like to continue our exploration efforts uh, with the objective of finding uh, many such more such deposits in that particular area. So, that is because some idea about the broad geological aspects of the area is known and we call that brownfield. Sometimes we also do uh, have this uh, thing in our mind that what is the difference between exploration and prospecting. Generally these two terms are almost used interchangeably or synonymously with each other. Although I would say that prospecting always would be referring to smaller areas where we are uh, carrying out some uh, ground uh, activities in terms of any of the methodologies that we will be seeing like a geological or a geophysical or geochemical and exploration would essentially be uh, through exploring through the unknown or taking much larger area where we can do the exploration by using not exactly a, a ground based work, but it could be uh, situations which would be where acquisition of data in many different other ways. This is how we could possibly uh, make some distinction between the two otherwise in many of the uh, textbooks and discussions you would see that these two terms are not really very distinctly differentiated. Okay, so, we will just uh, see what this exploration is all about. Mineral exploration can be thought of as kind of a four stage architecture. This four stage architecture it begins with or the very beginning stage uh, as per the conventional no, as per the uh, conventional wisdom that this is the uh, situation the exploration whenever we uh, take up an exploration mineral exploration program then we how do we start. We start with the reconnaissance stage means we try to ac acquire the very basic first level knowledge in an area and the work during the reconnaissance stage is it involves study of a much larger uh, area. So, generally the idea is to study a larger area with the objective of choosing smaller domains where exploration efforts could be intensified. So, this is the beginning stage. So, here if we see here the small scale geological maps can be used. <coughs> so, small scale I, uh, the geological maps this the uh, small scale means the where the scale is something like if I say that a small a small scale means means if I say that one, one kilometer ground distance is represented by say 2 centimeter, here this scale is 
1 is to 50,000. In comparison to that, if I say that a distance, a ground distance of 25 meter or 20 meter is being represented by 1 centimeter, then this would be a scale which is I could put as 1 is to 2000. So, here this is a small scale map and here it is a large scale map. So, we have uh, generally a topo sheet uh, is a scale in which we have representation of 1 is to 1, 1 is to 50,000 and even there could be scale uh, smaller than that 1 is to 100,000 or 1 is to 63,000 as is 1 inch is equal to 1 mile that was to be the previous scale. And so, the difference between the two is that on a on a geological map which is prepared on a small scale many of the uh, features which are uh, small or less in dimension for example, any mineralized vein or any kind of a uh, uh, any, any structure <coughs> or any smaller feature or alteration zones and so on, which will be measuring only in few tens of meters or so, will not will not be representable on a small scale map. Whereas, uh, we can always uh, or if you want to study the area uh, more minutely and can represent many of these features, important features which is the dimensions are small measurable in only in terms of tens of meters or so can be well represented on a large scale map. So, here the, the smaller scale the small scale geological maps are, are, are prepared as a, as a routine geological investigation in any uh, any agency in any country like say for example, the geological survey of India in India many such many all, all the countries have their geological surveys who have the primary responsibility of, uh, of uh, preparing first level geological maps small scale geological maps whose, who serve as the first available information for any exploration program to begin with. And that is that is what is the situation which was happening uh, in the past. Now, the in the present time if we uh, when we see that we do also have much smaller much much smaller scale features depicting the uh, many of these surface features or the, uh, the features on the surface of the earth such as the satellite imagery. Such as these satellite imageries which are which can be possibly can be thought of as the uh, the smallest possible scale that of the of the feature that we can have and even we can have uh, much uh, we can have still a little larger but still very small com much smaller compared to toposite scale geological map or any other map which is drawn on a toposite scale like for example a regional scale airborne geophysical anomaly or ge airborne gravity uh, anomaly or say geophysical anomaly maps. So, these are the uh, materials which can be very well utilized when we when we are in the reconnaissance stage and trying to identify certain features that you can pick up which, which would look to us as favorable to carry out further exploration work. So, we will uh, continue discussing on this uh, uh, four stage architecture in the next class. Thank you very much.